This is who I was, but it's definitely not who I am. Welcome to Vegas Prison Stories. Welcome back to Vegas Prison Stories. I got another good one for you today. Saturday, April 27, 2002. The Harris Casino in Laughlin, Nevada. An all-out brawl breaks out between two very notorious and infamous motorcycle clubs, the Hells Angels and the Mongols. So what went down between the two? Why did this even happen? So since 1983, Laughlin has always had the Laughlin River Run. Laughlin sits on the Arizona-Nevada border. Between Bullhead and Laughlin is the Colorado River. Now for the Laughlin River Run, this is the biggest motorcycle enthusiast run of the year. This is weekend warriors all the way up to your one percenter MCs. They all get together. There's all types of fun and games going on. Now they have live concerts, motorcycle vendors, people selling saddlebags to motorcycles, accessories. They have a poker run, drag races, a super sick bike show, and even the notorious Miss Laughlin Beauty Contest. So let's get back to the 2002 River Run. Now it's the very first night of the run and a Las Vegas Metropolitan Police officer heads over to the Flamingo in Laughlin and starts talking to some of the Hells Angels. Now the officer, he tells the Hells Angels that some of their brothers are surrounded and being harassed by some of the Mongols over at the Harris Casino just up the strip. Now why would an officer do that? It seems to me like he might have been trying to get them into a wreck or maybe he low-key just has a certain feeling for the Hells Angels and he was looking out. I don't know. I wasn't there. I haven't talked to the guy. So hearing this, of course, the Hells Angels, like 35 of them go roaring up to the Harris Casino. Now what these Hells Angels don't know is that there wasn't any real drama going on. It was mostly peaceful. It was over at the center bar of the Harris Casino in Laughlin. Sure, Mongols are there. Hells Angels are there. But it's not that kind of scene. Now, among these Mongols is the national president, Doc Kavasis, and the future national president, Little Dave. Both of them are actually on this scene. They're in this brawl. Now, noteworthy, both of those men have been put out bad by the club for various different reasons. I'm not trying to do a whole thing on that right now. So the Hells Angels show up. They find their brothers. They come in like a storm, make their presence felt, then the two sides get to jawing at each other a little bit. That's when things start to turn for the worse. On camera, you can see Hells Angel Raymond Folks runs in, hits him with the ninja style drop kick, goes right after him. Naturally, the Mongols, they didn't appreciate something like that. Maybe his form was off. Maybe he didn't tuck his foot under enough. I don't know, but the Mongols were like, ah, we give that a seven, let's get it. Bing, bing, bing. So this full out brawl, we're talking 40 on 40 melee. They're using bottles. They're using knives. They're using pow pows, wrenches, chairs. Everything that they can put their hands on is going across somebody's head. Now, random bystanders who happen to just be there gambling, well, they were in for a shock. When you see something like this going on, what are you going to do? Man, I, hey, I'm an ex-felon. I've been around all kinds of craziness. I would probably have a little nervousness to me. If I'm around and I see this popping off near me, don't nobody want to be in the middle of two motorcycle clubs going after each other. That's a big fact. So these people are hitting the deck. The dealers at the, at the tables are trying to cover up all the money so nobody steals it. It was a wild scene. Now, by all accounts, the first shots fired did come from the Mongols' side. Then, shortly after that, you could hear a couple more shots ring out from a Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department officer. Now, by the time all was said and done, one Mongol, 43-year-old Anthony Barrera, lay dead, stabbed, and two Hells Angels, 27-year-old Jeremy Bell, and 50-year-old Robert Tumultry, they lay dead also from gunshot wounds. Now, never before has there been multiple murders, basically, on a casino floor like this. Overall, about 16 other people were taken to the emergency rooms or the hospitals, either in Kingman or Las Vegas. Not only that, the cops confiscated over 50 shanks and multiple pow pals. So there's a few motives behind why this could have happened and all of them could be intertwined. They could be nothing. So the first motive is the Hells Angels, they had a merch stand. 
Reportedly, a few Mongols had come by and kind of teased at him, made fun of him a little bit or whatnot. Not saying that they were being made fun of. So before you guys start jumping in my comments, talking all that head, I get it. But this was reported. The Mongols went by, kind of made jokes and, and, you know, laughed. Ha ha ha, look at you, you know, your, your shoes are untied type thing. So that caused a little bit of a beef between the clubs. Now also, a Hells Angel named Christian Tate was found shot in the back on the I-40, about 90 miles south of the ride. He was on his way home. Weirdly enough, they found his ID sitting on his seat. That's just a strange thing for me. So it's not like that actually happened in Laughlin, but I'm sure that the word had already gotten out and the Hells Angels had heard about this. Naturally, the Hells Angels have problems with certain clubs, bright shining problems. So when one of their people end up shot in a ditch, they're gonna start looking to who did it. Now you add to that that the Mongols vice president had found dynamite underneath his car not too long before all of this. And then a handful of hokey pokies had gone down. Well, with all this, you have the ingredients of a world-class riot. And that's what was happening. Now, after the dust had settled, they charged everybody. I'm talking, if you were wearing a patch and you were in the area, you're going to jail. Dozens of members were charged on both sides. Now, many of those charges eventually were dropped. And we'll get to that in just a minute, too. So who was arrested on the Mongol side of things? Alexander Alcantar. He was the first one. He was charged with the two deaths of the two Hells Angels. Obviously, he's the one seen letting off his pow pow. So what exactly did they charge him with? Instead of me going through a whole slew of charges like I usually do on some of the indictments, I'm just going to sit back. We're going to enjoy this together to a little bit of music. This is how you catch charges in Nevada. Well done. <laughs> these charges. What do you think he was found guilty on? Well, he took a plea deal for two charges of involuntary manslaughter. For this, he received two 18 to 45 month sentences to run concurrent in the NDOC. All in all, that's a pretty good deal after seeing that laundry list. And that list is what everybody was getting hit with. It was the same thing for everybody. Now, Mongol Benjamin Leva, aka Secret, which is a dope ass nickname, well, he was charged with hitting an H.A. in the head with a beer bottle. Now, Benjamin Leva, he took a plea deal for battery with the use of a deadly weapon. For that, he got 12 to 30 months in the NDOC. So far, what they charged him with compared to what, what actually happened in the end is pure Nevada. That's exactly what they do. They give you a bunch of charges, hope you plea down to something just to get you put away. Then there was Mongol member Kenneth Dissert. Dysart? Dissert. I don't know. He settled on a plea deal for firing into a structure. He got that love too. 12 to 30 months in the NDOC. Not too bad, Kenny. Then it was Pedro Martinez's turn from the Mongols. Now Pedro ended up taking the deal for battery with the use of a deadly, causing substantial bodily harm. With that little bit, he got a two to five year sentence. Still not that bad. Now, the Mongols' current president, at least from what I'm hearing, is Roger Piney, or Penny, is Roger. Now, he took a plea deal for conspiracy to commit battery or provoke or breach peace. That's a lot of words to throw a conspiracy at somebody. Basically, that's one of those, we don't have anything else kind of lower that we can give you, so we made up all this mumble jumbo, and here's a bunch of words that tells you that you got probation. Basically, that's what he came out with. How many years? Just one. Just one. See, they don't care. They just want to get those numbers out. That's Nevada style. Now, finally, on the Mongol side, there's Walter Ramirez, a.k.a. Bumper. Now, Walter got charged in all of this because he helped Alexander Alcantar get out of the casino and get away from the whole scene after Alcantar had 
done what he had done to the two Hells Angels. For this, he got obviously charged with the conspiracy and the accessory. Now for this, he was looking at anywhere from one to five years in the Nevada Department of Corrections. But the Fed swooped in, said, no, we got a little something better we're going to charge this man on. And that sentence was never handed down. So I went looking to see what was up with Walter Ramirez. I got to say, this man's name shows up on just about every Mongol's indictment for the last 15 to 20 years. This dude's out there getting it. With that being said, I'm not going to say anything else about that man. He's with his business. Salute to you, Mr. Ramirez. Shit. Now it was time for the Hells Angels, the ones who, in the eyes of the law, actually provoked this. Well, not only that, the feds came in and threw down their own indictment too. It's very rare when you have to fight a state case and a fed case at the same time for the same thing. I would have thought double jeopardy would have saved you somewhere. Obviously, I'm not a lawyer. I don't do that attorneyist stuff. So 42 Hells Angels in five separate states were indicted in this federal indictment. Basically, they charged every single Hells Angel member that was on the scene at Harrah's when this thing went down. 42 of them caught the charges. What charges did they get? 10 counts of racketeering and one count of carrying a firearm. Now, why would they give them just one sole count of carrying a firearm? Say the racketeering charge. For each of those, they're looking at either a five-year or a 20-year minimum mandatory sentence. So they charge them with 10 apiece. Then they give them the gun charge. What happens with that little puppy? If they're convicted of it, it has its own 10-year minimum mandatory sentence. So that's why they do it. They do it to enhance sentences. So each one of these men were arrested in the state that they come from. And then they were brought to Las Vegas to stand trial after being arraigned. Now, the feds actually came in and said that they were actually able to buy military explosives from a member of the Hells Angels. And I'm not talking military grade. I'm talking in the boxes with the stamps. They know what base it came from, basically. Like, these dudes were doing the most. So the feds went. They raided the clubhouse in Las Vegas, in San Francisco, Spokane, Washington, Anchorage, Alaska, and North Pole, Alaska. Like, these dudes basically went up into Santa's territory trying to catch the Hells Angels. They even went as far as arresting the president of the San Bernardino chapter of the Hells Angels and three of his officers in this indictment. Not only that, they got Tucson's Hells Angels president, as well as the Mesa, Arizona Hells Angels president, all wrapped up in this little indictment. Then the Fed case fell apart. Why? Because them boys was playing dirty. They didn't turn over every bit of evidence they had to defensive lawyers. And the defense, they came in swinging. The federal judge, well, he did what he was supposed to do. He dismissed all the charges against 36 of the 42 men in this indictment. So basically, they're left with six Hells Angels that they can actually prosecute on a state and federal level. Now, Calvin Schaefer, he was caught on camera firing his pow pow at some Mongols. Now, for this, on the federal level, he took a plea deal and got 51 months for racketeering. Now, they also ran that concurrent with the two to five from Nevada State for battery with the use of a deadly weapon causing substantial bodily harm. Next, it was Dale Leadham's turn. Now, he was caught on camera hitting the hokey pokey on one of the Mongols and beating him while he was on the ground. So, he got two years in the feds for violent crime in aid of racketeering. Now, they ran that concurrent with the state charge of battery with the use substantial bodily harm, which he got 12 to 30 months on. Then it was Frederick Donahue's turn. Now, this man, he managed to go on the run for a full five years between the time this had happened and the time, basically, it was time to go to trial. How did they catch him? Well, he surrendered himself. After five years on the run, he surrendered himself. Now, for his part in this, he was able to secure himself a 30-month plea deal. Now, he stood in front of his brothers in open court and said, I was at the casino that night and I shot someone. Then he went a step further and said that he had done it to maintain his position in the Hells Angels enterprise. Now, when he said this, his brothers kind of squirmed in their chair, shaking their heads. They knew what time it was. So that 30-month federal, it ran concurrent with the two to five from the state for, you guessed it, 
battery with the use of a deadly causing substantial bodily harm. Now, James Hannigan, one of the Hells Angels seen doing the hokey pokey on one of the Mongols, well, he took a two-year plea deal in the feds for violent act in aid of racketeering. Well, he got his two years for that. He also got a 12 to 30 for the battery with the use in Nevada to run concurrent, obviously. Maurice Eunice, well, he was also found on camera firing that thing off. He got a 30-month sentence in the feds for the violent crime in aid of racketeering, and that also ran concurrent with the 12 to 30 in Nevada State for battery with the use of a deadly SBH. Now, Rodney Cox, the Hells Angel that took his wrench and smashed one of the Mongols over the head with it, anybody want to guess what he got? He got two years in the feds, violent crime in aid of racketeering, also to run concurrent with 12 to 30, battery with the use of a deadly substantial bodily harm in Nevada. Now, finally, there's Raymond Folks. He's the Hells Angel that was seen running up, drop ninja style kicking one of the Mongols to pop this whole thing off. Obviously, Raymond is not a man for talking. He had heard enough, he had seen enough, and he wanted to go in there and do a little demonstration of what he had learned while he was watching The Karate Kid on Netflix. That's for sure. So he got the same as the others. Two years in the feds for the violent crime in aid of racketeering. God, I hate saying that. And then he got 12 to 30 in Nevada. But this one wasn't for a battery with the use. Listen to this. He got 12 to 30 in Nevada to run concurrent for challenge to a fight with the use of a deadly weapon. All right, whatever. I guess if you're holding a weapon and you challenge somebody to a fight. So all in all, I have to say this. Everybody who got charged and convicted in the 2002 Laughlin River run, you guys got away pretty clean. You, you know, you got away with one. You can go ahead and give me 51 months. That's the longest sentence that was handed down in any of the cases. 51 months. You can give me a little over four years for popping off at 40 dudes in a casino around innocent people. And the most I got to do is that. That's love if you ask me. Basically, everybody got pretty much on an average a two-year sentence. Some got 30 months. That's two years, you know, and they ran it all concurrent. Most of them did their time in Nevada. By the time they had gotten out in Nevada, I'm sure they had to go see like a federal parole officer or something, but come on, man. What? Now, also, they were sneaky. In each of the plea deals, the feds made sure that each one of these men referred to the Hells Angels as an enterprise. See, why would they do this? Well, the feds aren't stupid. They know that they can go in there and they can start building these RICO cases against their brothers because their brothers have now said, hey, it's an enterprise. You put along with that that these are trademarked logos. The Hells Angels, the Mongols, the Mongols actually lost their copyright to their own stuff. Tell me that's not crazy. The feds literally went and they sued Doc Kavasis and like 30 other Mongols and said, hey, you can't sell that stuff anymore. We own the trademarks to that. You've lost your right to that. So usually these stories end with a cautionary tale. You see, this dude does something stupid. He gets X amount of years, ruined his entire life, things like that, right? All Nevada really did is say, if you're a part of a 1% MC and you get into a 70 man melee in one of our casinos on the casino floor, and you pull out them pow pals and you do the hokey pokey and start turning fools around, here's your four and a half years. Do I wish the more time on them? No, no. Doc Kavasis, probably, yeah. Little Dave, I don't know, up in the air. But neither here nor there, that's none of my business. My business is telling stories of happenings in Nevada. And this is what happened. The Hells Angels went up there, picked themselves a fight, had a world-class fight. I gotta, I gotta give it to both the Mongols and the Hells Angels, man. You guys were putting on. You did that. That's wild. That's wild. I remember for years, people did not want to show up at the Laughlin River Run because this had happened. The Mongols actually came out and put a newsletter out in the Laughlin Times or whatever it's called down there. I don't know if it's the sun or whatever. The week of the River Run, they actually put a newsletter out in this newspaper telling the public how they deeply regret that this all happened and they will not be showing up. Low-key, I don't want to blame either side because I don't know the happenings in the background. Why did this happen? Why did that happen? Here's what I do know. The Mongols 
they always had Harris. And the Hells Angels, they always had the Flamingo. So what in the hell were any Hells Angels doing up at Harris to begin with to be surrounded by Mongols? So the cop comes down and he says, oh, your brothers are surrounded by Mongols at Harris. Well, your brothers probably should be because they're at a Mongol hotel at the time. That's all I'm going to say. You go pick in a fight, you're going to find it. And they found it. And it costed people their lives. And it costed the public not having a good run for a minute because they were too scared to go. It costed the people that made the run, who, who put all that together. If you're a band, are you going to go play at a place that you think might get lit up? I wouldn't. What kind of live music is that, man? This ain't, this ain't Roadhouse. This is real life. So that's my spiel on this. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for coming to Vegas Prison Stories. I appreciate each and every one of you. I hope you guys have an amazing day. And I'll see you next time. This is who I was, but it's definitely not who I am. Welcome to Vegas Prison Stories. These motherfuckers done lost their minds. Who does that? I can't even blame the Mongols though. You're at your own hotel. Like, I have a room upstairs. These dudes show up. Why are you even here? You know we don't like each other. Why are you even... That'd be like... That'd be like a blood walking into a Crips neighborhood and then wondering why the hell shit popped off. You know? It just doesn't make any sense. I don't want to sound like I'm hating on the angels. Uh, but... I don't know, man. I've been doing some funny shit lately. At least the more and more I read about it, it's like, yo, what kind of boo-boo shit is that? Like, they're about it. They're definitely about it. But a little too... Who? Hey, calm down, Sparky. You ain't got to go do all that. Fuck. Just go have a good time. Meet at a bar fight like you normally do. Not in the middle of a casino. Cameras everywhere. In the footage, too. I didn't want to bring it up because I don't want no hate. You see Doc Cavasis is up front. Like, he is literally up front where the fight's going on. Little Dave. Now, I don't know if he was going to watch that back flank. I'm just going to say he was in the back flank. He was watching the back flank. That's where Little Dave was. Doc Cavasis, yeah, I don't know, man. Hey, if you're out there, Doc Cavasis, and you're not in prison, I don't know. I didn't really look it up too much. And you want to talk? I'll listen to you. I don't give a shit. I think. Did he snitch? We don't, we don't, yeah, we don't deal with snitches. But it is a story, I guess. I don't know. At least if you're out there and you watch this, man, and you want to get a hold of me to talk about what all was going on that night, because you were obviously right there, front and center. Like the man had a heart. He facing a wall of hell's angels and he's up there national presidenting and motherfucker was frontlining. He was George Washington for sure that day. I don't know what little Dave would have been. Benedict. Uh. All right, you guys. I'll see you guys tomorrow night on a live. I appreciate you all. Better turn this off before a train comes along and messes up all my audio. But they've been doing that to me lately. I can't tell y'all. Early in the morning, 2.30 in the morning, I get a train coming by. This dude lays on the horn 2.30 in the morning. Like, I'm I'm blocks away from it, but you can still hear it. Boy, I'll go over there and throw a rock at that dude, but I'm sure it'd be a federal crime, so we're not even going to put that out there. Later, Holtas. Is that Holta? Is that, what's that mean? All right, Rick's Spanish word of the day. I need the meaning, Holta. Deuces, motherfuckers. <laughs>